like a rhetorical question, although you are, of course, welcome to answer it if you want. So I've written, why, after almost 50 years of the word co-production having been introduced, do we seem to be no further forward of implementing it properly into our health and social care systems? So I'll just give you a brief introduction. So we started to hear the word co-production in the 1970s when Eleanor at Ostrom and her team and an Edgar Khan, who was a civil rights lawyer, started to champion its cause. It came to the UK around about the 1980s with Anna Coote, who was then working for the King's Fund in London. And she said, reciprocal relationships between doctors and patients are essential, and without it, both sides will fail. Now, there's no definitive meaning to co-production because it's such a fluid word and it changes depending on what it is that you're trying to do. But this is what it generally means to me. It's power that is shared more equally between those that use services and those that provide them. Everyone's skills and expertise are put to use. Is it possible to have complete 100% co-production? Probably not. But one thing is clear, it is a word that is being increasingly misused. So, I'm Selva. I used to be a haematologist with the NHS for almost 20 years. This, the same NHS that couldn't or wouldn't support my chronic depression and anxiety. And due also to senior management's behavior in our department, it just added to it, and I was not the only one. So yes, I am one of those people with lived experience. And what I've noticed is when attending meetings, sessions, etc., someone with lived experience, services tend to think that consultation is co-production or is that what they want us to think it is? Consultation is a process where many of the key decisions have already been made. And guess what? People like myself and probably all of you in this room are not stupid. And we see our involvement as just tokenistic, not meaningful, and then a lot of us disengage. Not me, by the way, I'm not going to disengage. But perhaps this is what services actually want, and then they can still tick that co-production box. My idea of co-production is that all participants, or stakeholders, if you want to use jargon, are fully involved from the absolute beginning. Agreements, values, rules, whatever you want to call them, are agreed by all uh, participants right at the beginning, written down, and signed. Design, decision making, delivery, evaluation. Who is involved in what, which parts, and to what extent is all agreed on. So the dark side of co-production. And these are like a bit of a question and answer, although I'm answering them. One, is co-production difficult? Yes. It is to start with because it requires a whole new way of working. It's a change of mindset and it has to run throughout the whole organization. Is it time consuming? Yes. Again, to start with, it's long term, which I know many, many organizations don't like that word. It is long term, which needs to be embedded into the whole organization where it becomes everyone's business. Is there a fear of the unknown? Yes. I think there's a theme here. We know organizations are generally risk adverse and that can stop them from listening to those benefits and the improved patient prospects that we can get from co-production. Can funder restrictions steer the outcomes of projects? Oh yes. Skewed data and results are used, portraying what actually makes the funder look best. Okay, is there a lack of knowledge, understanding and training and complete buy-in in organizations? Yes, <laughs> the idea of co-production champions is just one way to help spread co-production through an organization. 
does the thought of sharing power or that perceived loss of power put them off? Yes. They are used to working from a top-down hierarchy. They know what's best and what the hell do services, service users know about it anyway. This is where that change in mindset comes in. Do you know, in my opinion, there's no loss in power. It's just sharing, helping people to help themselves. Isn't that actually empowering everyone? Your job role will be the same, the salary will be the same, there'll be plenty of work left. So where the hell is this loss of power? Stop gatekeeping and spread the power and increase everybody's well-being and mental health. And lastly, last question, is it more expensive? To my knowledge, no. Oh, I said no. Not any, more, not any more than the current traditional and wasteful methods being employed now. And actually in the long term, there should be savings as less people require these services as often, and hopefully maybe not at all. So to finish, this is just the tip of the co-production iceberg. And I have added a little bit more on that sort of right hand side if you're interested in, in any more. Thank you. Thank you.